Justin Trudeau is in total panic mode. Welcome back to another Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. Yesterday, Justin Trudeau announced that his carbon tax is working, but also announced that it's not working. Let's take a look. Let me first talk a bit about the price on pollution. Economists and experts around the world have long known that putting a price on carbon emissions is the best way to drive down those emissions that cause climate change. It's the cheapest, most efficient, and most impactful way. And it's working. We are bending the curve, leading the G7 countries, because of our price on pollution. And now we designed that price on pollution so that it incentivizes people to choose less polluting ways to live and work, and it puts money back in the pockets of eight out of ten households where the federal system applies. So it both drives behavior and puts more money back in the pockets of eight out of ten households across the country. So we have to talk about this again. Trudeau's carbon tax rebate is not putting money back into the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians. Here is the report again from the parliamentary budget office that is trudeau's report that wasn't made by conservatives that was made by liberals and all of the red show all of the demographics of canadians that are not getting a rebate therefore the vast amount of canadians even if they are getting a rebate are losing money so the, the semantics of we're putting more money back in the pocket. No, you're putting money back into the pockets after you've taken it out. But you're putting less of what you took in the first place. Yeah, that would be like somebody, you know, stealing a hundred bucks from your wallet and then slipping you a five. So it supports people to make better choices and puts money back in their pockets. However, we've heard clearly from Atlantic Canadians through our amazing Atlantic MPs, that since the federal pollution price came into force this summer, replacing provincial systems, certain features of that pollution price needed to be adjusted to work for everyone. Specifically, as Cody said, many people in Atlantic Canada and in rural communities across the country rely on home heating oil. And to be blunt, the price signal on heating oil is not resulting in enough people being able to switch to electric heat pumps despite people wanting to move to these cleaner home heating options. You mean people don't have enough money to actually buy stuff? Well, as a government that is focused on evidence and data and outcomes and that is listening to Canadians, we heard you. We heard our Atlantic MPs and we heard Atlantic Canadians. We heard it through conversations at the door, conversations with other orders of government, concerns even as people were concerned about the need to continue to fight climate change, concerns about our abilities to continue to support our families and make it through winter. We heard it through the polling numbers of Atlantic Canadians that we were getting smashed by the Conservatives. And that's the only reason they care. How many times have we unfortunately seen in these comments that, you know, viewers from Atlantic Canada are having to choose whether to heat or eat, whether they're choosing to have to keep their house at like 65 degrees in the winter time or or they starve like this is disgusting and justin trudeau does not care about any of that all he cares about is seeing the liberals losing ground in the polls so if you live in atlantic canada don't be fooled and don't let your friends and family be fooled into thinking that justin trudeau and the liberals actually care about anything other than pushing this climate agenda remember eight years it doesn't take eight years to come to this conclusion everyone it takes a day and concerns that even though people wanted to do the right thing they weren't necessarily given the option or the ability to do it so this team behind me worked incredibly hard 
with our ministers, with our whole team, to get it right, to make sure that we are still leading in the fight against climate change, that we are unwavering in our commitment to protect Atlantic Canadians and indeed all Canadians from the extreme weather events that are increasingly the norm, while ensuring that people can be confident about their present and their future financially. Now, Cody talked about how all Atlantic Canadians understand as well as anyone else in the country why we need to fight climate change and what the impacts of extreme weather are on people. But we have to make sure we're fighting climate change in ways that supports all Canadians. That has been at the centre of our choices as a government for the past eight years. Fight climate change while supporting Canadians in how we do it. So that is why today we are announcing a three-year pause on the federal pollution price on heating oil so that we can give everyone the time and ability to switch to heat pumps. A three-year pause. So just long enough to get re-elected and then he's going to slap you with that, that carbon tax again. Yeah, you're going to slap it right back on. Why? Why would you do that? Like, why would you do that as a government? Just be like, oh, well, you know. Actually, I know why they're doing that as a government. Actually, I know why they're doing that as a government. It's so that they can buy your vote now, and then when they're in office for another four years, they're going to do what they want because they don't actually care about Canadians or how Canadians are suffering with this carbon tax. Well, and we were told that climate is serious and Canadians have to make sacrifices, and this is just what we have to do. Well, apparently not, because now you're doing this, right? And here's the other thing. He said, oh, there's this team behind me. They've been working really hard. Really? So you had all those people that are making close to 200 grand a year, and you have them working, quote unquote, extremely hard. And what they came up with is, let's pause the carbon tax for three years until you get elected. Yeah, until you get elected again. And then you can put it in permanently and nobody has any recourse. You know what our recourse is right now, folks? Our recourse is to vote conservative. Pretty much. And here's the most important thing about this announcement, everybody. This is so significant because this shows the first crack in this carbon tax position that Trudeau and his entire government have been ramming down everyone's throats. The fact that they're even pausing this, quote unquote, pausing, that's a huge crack in their armor on this. And the conservatives are going to dive right in. Well, this whole time, the liberals have been saying how important climate change is and climate action, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's only important until they start losing votes. And then it's not important. Then they're able to pause it for three years. What does that tell you? The most important thing that it should tell you is it clearly illustrates what we've been saying, what the conservatives have been saying, in that Trudeau has been lying through his teeth this whole time. Because think about it. What they've been saying is, well, the carbon rebate puts more money back in your pocket. Okay, let's go with that premise. I understand that there are communities on PEI and across Atlantic Canada where you need to drive. So I understand that... Um, you know, our policy need our policies need to respect that, and I really believe they do. Uh, I really believe that as people start receiving the climate incentive payments, uh, climate action incentive payments, people will recognize that they're getting money back in their bank accounts, in their pockets. We designed our policy that way so that it wouldn't actually affect it wouldn't affect the bottom line of Canadians. Eight out of 10 Canadians get back more than the price on pollution costs them. So if that's actually the case, why do you have to pause it? Explain that one to me, Trudeau. Right. If the carbon tax is actually putting more money in the pockets of Canadians, and you have to take the financial considerations of Atlantic Canadians in this, so you're pausing the carbon tax. Why would you have to pause it? Because he's lying to us about what it actually does. It doesn't help climate change, and it doesn't help Canadians. 
He has just revealed to all that they have been lying through their teeth that the what was on the Parliamentary Budget Office report is completely accurate. That almost every Canadian is taking a net loss on this carbon tax. And in some cases, thousands of dollars of a net loss. So everyone really needs to pay attention to that. Coincidentally, Pierre has been continuing his campaign in a trip in Atlantic Canada and has responded to the announcement during a press conference in Nova Scotia today. Justin Trudeau is in total panic mode. After eight years of telling Canadians they had to pay higher carbon taxes on gas, heat, and groceries, he admitted that his carbon tax is not worth the cost of heat. Now what caused this sudden press conference that he cobbled together on Parliament Hill with little notice? Was it because he was concerned at the 78% increase in food bank use under his watch? No. Was it because he worried that 1.9 million visits had to happen to a single in a single month to food banks because Canadians could not feed themselves after eight years of his leadership? No. Was it because he's worried that scurvy is making a comeback after eight years of his government's taxes and inflationary policies? No, that didn't worry him either. It was it because he was worried that he doubled the cost of housing or that these Homeless encampments are becoming common right across the country. That wasn't his concern either. What caused Justin Trudeau to freak out yesterday and hold a sudden press conference to announce that he was going to pause the carbon tax on home heating oil? The answer is that he was plummeting in the polls and Pierre Polyev was holding massive rallies in liberal held ridings to axe the tax. Justin Trudeau's not worried about the cost of living. He's worried about the cost of votes. And that's what caused his panicked flip-flop yesterday. Yesterday was the one year anniversary that liberal MPs, including liberal MPs from Newfoundland and Labrador, voted to keep taxes on home eating oil. But what does this announcement really mean? Well, one, Trudeau and the Liberals are still going to go ahead with a carbon tax on your gas and groceries, a tax they plan to quadruple to 61 cents a litre. Two, Justin Trudeau announced yesterday that if you re-elect him, he will put the tax back on your home eating oil. Three, he says, don't worry, he'll send you 11 bucks more in the mail. 11 bucks. These days, that's a few cups of coffee. Who's going to feed themselves on 11 bucks while he drives up the cost of the gas and diesel that you put in your car, the fuel that goes into the, the, sh the boats of our fishermen and into the tractors of our farmers, which will drive up the food of the cost of all the food we bring home? That's what you're voting for if you keep Justin Trudeau or the local Atlantic Canadian Liberals elected. A 61 cents a liter carbon tax that will force our seniors to cut back on meals and go hungry. It'll mean more malnutrition. It'll mean hundreds of thousands more Canadians jamming into food banks. Lineups at food banks they look like bread lines from the Great Depression after eight years of Justin Trudeau. But he's not done yet. So my message to Atlantic Canadians and all Canadians, don't be fooled by Justin Trudeau's latest panic maneuver. He still plans to hit you with a 61 cent a litre carbon tax and every single Liberal MP is responsible for making that tax apply. And finally, what about all the other Canadians who don't use home eating oil but use gas? Gas, which ironically has lower greenhouse gas emissions, will still pay the carbon tax. So working class people in the suburbs of Ontario, the prairies, and British Columbia, 
who heat with natural gas will be cold and broke because of Justin Trudeau and his carbon tax. He's excluding, he, he doesn't care about them because he's making political calculations. This is not about environmental science, it's about political science. That's about as good as you can sum it up, folks. He's buying votes, or trying to, anyway. Well, and, you know, it, it makes me upset because I think some people may be tricked by this, but at the same time, I remember going back to when I was a, a very young woman and, and in customer service, and they always told us, like, try to keep your customers happy because once you lose them, it doesn't matter what you do or say, it's almost impossible to get them back. And I'm hoping that's the point that the Liberal Party is at right now, that they've alienated themselves from the majority of Canadian voters. And they've done just such a horrible job that Canadians already have it in their mind that no, I'm going to vote Conservative, I want change in this country. And that no matter what the Liberals say or do, they're not going to get those votes back. Right. And OK, so you're, you're eliminating the carbon tax on home heating. Great. Well, you're still making everybody broke with all of the other impacts of the carbon tax. And the conservatives are the only ones that are promising to get rid of the carbon tax. Right. Trudeau, and even in this latest stunt, is just saying that he's going to essentially prorogue it and only for Atlantic rural Canadians for the next three years. After that three-year point, it's coming back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's to get him through the next election, and then it's slapped right back on you, and then you're stuck. Hi, uh, Cameron Kilfoy with The Telegram. Uh, even with the changes announced by Trudeau yesterday, I'm curious how this impacts those in NL. Is it enough to help? No. This is a tiny gimmick. First of all, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians should know that Trudeau still plans to bring in a 61 cent a litre carbon tax on your gas and your, your diesel. Two, they should know he continues, he will continue to tax the fuel of the fishermen and farmers who produce our food and the truckers who ship the food, which is a tax on all the food. It is going to be a very high tax on the rural and remote communities. In, I was in Yukon. The grocer in Whitehorse said that he paid more in fuel charges to ship the food from Edmonton than he did for the food itself. So this is a Trudeau tax on food, on gas, and if he's re-elected, it will be a tax on your heat. Remember, he's saying if he gets re-elected in the next election a year later, he will put the tax back on home heating oil. So this is a scam designed to trick oil heating households into voting for him one more time before he can hit them with his big tax hike. Only the common sense conservatives will ax the tax entirely. Now, we've had some comments that have said, well, you know, I've heard that Pierre said they're only going to cut it. And so that implies that they're not going to get rid of it. I hope that makes it quite clear. They are planning to, quote, ax the tax entirely, end quote. So that should put that to bed for everybody. And the second piece is it's almost as if Trudeau is saying, your prize for electing me in the next election is you get to pay more taxes again. That's, like, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I didn't think about it like it's that. It's the most ridiculous yeah. thing I've ever heard yeah. from a politician. Vote for me one more time and we'll slap you with a carbon tax at the end of it. Like it's, this, this, is, this is the world we live in. Folks. Fire is campaign manager. Hi there, I'm Sarah Smelly. I'm with the Canadian Press. Uh, given concerns that you and others have voiced over pro-Palestinian rallies, demonstrations that some argue have amounted to support for Hamas, if you form the next government, would you introduce laws that were in place under the Harper government that criminalize the advocacy or promotion of terrorism offenses? So we would, uh, let's distinguish. People can protest any cause they want. They can state any opinion they choose and that will not change when I'm Prime Minister. I am running for Prime Minister to make Canada the freest nation on earth. So people are free to disagree with me on the Middle East or anything else. I have condemned people with my words, not with any proposed censorship, who have glorified the genocidal attacks by Hamas on Israeli civilians, which was the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. 
we have already a criminal prohibition on providing material support to listed terrorist organizations like Hamas. That should be enforced. If you donate, raise money, coordinate, recruit for Hamas, it is already a crime and you should be arrested and prosecuted if you do that. At the same time, people are free to express any opinion they want, even when I find those opinions appalling. Finally, I don't agree with you conflating Palestinians with Hamas. They are completely different. The Palestinian people are not responsible for the evil of Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist dictatorship. They opposes it opposes itself on Palestinians. Palestinians are it, the Palestinian people themselves are innocent. Their lives are precious, and we should do everything we can to protect them and their families during this difficult time. And the Conservative Party expresses total solidarity with Canadian Jews and Canadian Muslims, both of whom are suffering because of this horrendous war that Hamas has unleashed and the evil that that organization represents. And in conclusion, we do believe Israel, like any other country, has the ability and the right to defend itself. That was really an impressive answer. Um, it was a trap question designed to try to lure Pierre into agreeing with a potentially problematic uh, proposal and, and alleged law that was under the Harper government. We haven't had a chance to look it up um, about criminalizing people who quote unquote support terrorism or voice support for terrorism. And if you notice, Pierre took a couple of seconds to actually think about this and it really shows you how well Pierre can think on his feet because those couple of seconds manifested a very, very careful and, and intelligent answer to this question. Now, there's a lot of people that um, have expressed their disdain for the people supporting the attacks that Hamas had actually orchestrated. And Pierre says, I condemn those people. I think a lot of people in Canada do because nobody agrees with the atrocities that happened. However, the problem with free speech is that you have to listen to it. Well, you don't have to listen to it, but you have to allow it to happen. You have to allow it to happen. You, you can exercise your rights by walking away from it. You can exercise your rights by asking the person to be quiet. You don't have to listen. Right but it doesn't give you the right to shut other people down. And that's the price, folks. That's the price with free speech. People are going to say things that you don't like, but, you know, Daisy Cousins had said that words don't have magic powers and, and they can't make you feel things without you allowing them to make you feel that way. So, I mean... If somebody calls you a name, it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to allow that to upset you. If somebody's protesting or saying something that you don't like, it's up to you whether or not you're going to let that upset you, whether you're going to allow that to cause you grief, whether whether you're going to act upon it by, say, counter-protesting, writing a letter, something of that nature, or even just walking away. That's up to you. So, you know, in the end, Pierre said, listen... I can condemn somebody, but that doesn't mean that I'm supporting or intend to put in any censorship laws to prevent people from ex exercising their right. And he is 100% correct on this. If you want to have a f free, a truly free country, then you, you have to allow that. There are some caveats to that. If you're advocating violence, if you're advocating, um, you know, harm on somebody, that's different. That's now not free speech. That's a incitement to, to violence. That's different. But, you know, you can say, well, I support these people. Well, I may think you're reprehensible, but it shouldn't be a crime. And that's the big difference between Trudeau and Pierre. Pierre will tell you to your face, I condemn everything that you're saying, but I respect your right to say it. And Trudeau, he won't even let you say it in the first place.